After studying this module, you shall be able to depict the change in thermodynamic quantities during a chemical reaction, derive the relation between enthalpy at constant pressure and enthalpy at constant volume, know about Kirchhoff equation, learn about flame and explosion temperature, learn about Hess's law of constant heat summation, know how Hess's law is extended to find entropy and free energy change and know the applications of Hess's law. The branch of chemistry which deals with the energy changes involved in a chemical reaction is called thermochemistry. It is the study of energy and heat associated with chemical reactions. Thermochemistry focuses on the energy changes primarily on the system's energy exchange with its surroundings. Thermochemistry can predict the quantities of reactants and products during the course of a reaction. It is also useful in prediction of the spontaneity of the reaction. It merges the concepts of thermodynamics with the concept of energy in the form of chemical bonds. The quantities like enthalpy, heat capacity, entropy, free energy, heat of formation are mainly calculated through this. According to thermochemistry, the change in energy which occurs in chemical reaction is mainly because of the change of bond energy. That is, it results from the breaking of bonds in the reactants and formation of new bonds in the product. Thermochemistry is based on two laws, Levoiser and Laplace's law. This law states that the change in energy accompanying any transformation is equal and opposite to change in energy accompanying the reverse process. Second is the Hess's law. This law states that the change in energy accompanying any transformation is same whether the process occurs in one step or many steps. Levoiser, Laplace and Hess also have done investigation on specific heat and latent heat. Now we shall see the change in thermodynamic quantities during a chemical reaction. First we shall see the change in internal energy of a chemical reaction. Consider a chemical reaction during which the temperature and volume is kept constant that is dV is equals to 0. Thus work done W is equal to 0 as W equals to P dV. Therefore the equation of first law that is delta U is equals to Q plus W becomes delta U equals to QV. QV stands for the heat exchanged at constant volume. Let UR be the internal energy of the reactants and UP be the internal energy of the products. Thus the change in internal energy will be given by equation as delta U equals to UP minus UR which is equals to QV. Now we shall see the change in enthalpy of a reaction. The heat exchanged at constant pressure is called as the enthalpy change. Suppose QP be the heat exchanged during a chemical reaction which is occurring at constant pressure. Then delta H is equals to QP. Let HR be the enthalpy of the reactants and HP be the enthalpy of the products. Thus the change in enthalpy will be given as delta H equals to HP minus HR which is equal to QP. Thermochemistry enables us to predict the amount of heat that would be evolved or absorbed in a process without actually performing a tedious set of experiments in the laboratory. The energy changes for the processes which are not feasibly experimentally can also be calculated through thermochemistry. Now we shall look at the sign convention. Reactions in which heat is absorbed by the system are called endothermic reactions. In such reactions HP is greater than HR so that delta H is positive. Since the energy of the system also increases by the absorption of heat thus 
delta U is also positive in endothermic reactions. While the reactions in which heat is evolved are called exothermic reactions. In such reactions, HP is less than HR so that delta H is negative. In such reactions, delta U is also negative. Now, we shall see the relation between enthalpy at constant volume that is QV and enthalpy at constant pressure that is QP. The relation between delta H and delta U is given by equation 5 as delta H equals to delta U plus P delta V where delta V is the volume change taking place in the reaction. Since QV equals to delta U and QP equals to delta H therefore we can write equation 5 as QP equals to QV plus P delta V. This is our equation 6. Now writing the above equation in a simplified manner for n moles of an ideal gas we have PV equals to nRT. This is our equation 7. Suppose n1 be the number of moles of gaseous reactants and n2 be the number of moles of gaseous products. Let n2 be greater than n1. Thus increase in the number of moles is given by n2 minus n1 equals to delta Ng. The corresponding increase in volume delta V will be given by V upon N into delta Ng. Therefore, we have equation 8 as or this can be written in the form of equation 9 as substituting equation 8 in equation 6 we get QP equals to QV plus delta Ng RT. In the equation delta Ng stands for the difference between the number of moles of gaseous products and gaseous reactants. Now we shall see the enthalpy of a chemical reaction. Standard enthalpy change of a reaction is defined as the enthalpy change of reaction determined at 25 degrees Celsius and at 1 atmospheric pressure. It is denoted by delta H naught. Considering various enthalpy changes, first we shall see the enthalpy of formation. The enthalpy of formation can be defined as the amount of heat exchanged at constant temperature and pressure during the formation of one mole of the substance from its constituent elements in their standard states. It is represented by delta HF. Its unit is kilojoules per mole. For example, the enthalpy of formation of carbon dioxide is equal to the enthalpy change for the reaction. For this, delta HF is minus 393.5 kilojoules per mole. For the reaction, delta HF is equal to minus 285.830 kilojoules per mole. For the reaction, delta HF is equal to plus 285.830 kilojoules per mole. Now we shall see the enthalpy of combustion. It is defined as the enthalpy change that takes place when one mole of a substance is burned completely in the presence of oxygen at a given temperature and pressure. It is denoted by delta Hc and the unit is kilojoules per mole. The combustion is always an exothermic process. For example, we have the combustion of methane for this reaction delta Hc at 298 Kelvin is minus 890 kilojoules per mole. For the reaction delta H0 at 298 Kelvin is minus 1560 kilojoules per mole. Now we shall look at the enthalpy of solution. The amount of heat exchanged when one mole of solute is dissolved in a sufficient amount of solvent at a specified temperature and pressure is known as the enthalpy of solution. For example, for this reaction delta H is minus 69.01 kilojoules per mole. For the another reaction delta H is minus 72.79 kilojoules per mole. These values of delta H show that the general dependence of the heat of solution on the amount of the solvent. As more and more solvent is used the value of heat of solution changes. 
as the amount of solvent increases the resultant solution becomes more dilute and ultimately it becomes so dilute that further addition of solvent produces no enthalpy change. This solution is known as infinitely dilute solution. Now we shall see the enthalpy of sublimation. It is the amount of enthalpy change to convert one mole of a solid to vapor state at a given temperature and pressure. For the reaction, delta H sublimation at 298 Kelvin is equal to 50.0 kilojoules per mole. Now we shall look at the enthalpy of fusion. It is the change in enthalpy to convert one mole of a solid to its liquid state at the given temperature and pressure. For the reaction, delta H of fusion at 298 Kelvin is 6.0 kilojoules per mole. Now we shall look at the enthalpy of atomization. It is the amount of heat required to convert one mole of the substance into its constituent atoms in the gaseous state. For the reaction, we have delta H A for graphite is equal to 716.68 kilojoules per mole. For the reaction, we have delta H A of H is equal to 436 kilojoules per mole. Now we shall see how to determine the enthalpies of reactions. Enthalpies of reactions at 25 degrees Celsius can be determined if delta HF values of the reactants and the products involved in the reactions are known as this is our equation 11. By convention delta H naught values for the elements in their standard states are taken as 0. Now we shall see the Kirchhoff's equation which shows the variation of enthalpy of reaction with temperature. The change in enthalpy of any physical or chemical process varies with temperature at constant pressure. The effect of temperature on the enthalpy can be understood as follows. Consider a reaction AA plus BB gives CC plus DD. The enthalpy change for the above reaction will be given by equation 12 as Differentiating equation 12 with respect to temperature at constant pressure, we get equation 13 as since Cp is equals to dH by dt at constant pressure, therefore equation 13 can be written as or it can be written in the form of equation 14 as where delta Cp is the sum of heat capacities of products minus sum of heat capacities of the reactants. Equation 14 is known as the Kirchhoff's equation. This equation states that the variation of delta H of a reaction with a temperature at constant pressure is equal to delta Cp of the system. That is, this is our equation 15. Rearranging the above equation, we get equation 16 as similarly, the dependence of enthalpy on temperature at constant volume is given by equation 17 as if the temperature range is small then change in heat capacity is given by equation 18 as assuming heat capacities are not dependent on temperature. Similarly we have the equation 19 as if the temperature range is not small then the heat capacities will vary with temperature. Thus it is convenient to express the heat capacity as a power series in temperature T that is this is our equation 20 where alpha, beta and gamma are constant for a given species. Similarly we have equation 21 as substituting equation 21 in equation 15 and integrating between T1 and T2 we get equation 22 as or this can be written in the form of equation 23 as Equation 23 is the integrated Kirchhoff's equation. Now we shall learn about the flame and the explosion temperatures. The combustion of a gaseous fuel in air occurs so rapidly that the heat produced during combustion does not get enough time to dissipate into the surroundings. Thus combustion process is found to be equivalent to an adiabatic process. The entire amount of heat produced is used up 
to heat the gases which are produced during combustion. Maximum flame temperature is defined as the maximum temperature attained by the flame zone that contains the resultant gases due to the heat evolved by the combustion of the fuel under adiabatic conditions at constant pressure. On the other hand, if the combustion is carried out under adiabatic conditions at constant volume, the maximum temperature attained is called maximum explosion temperature. Kirchhoff equation is used to calculate the maximum flame temperature for an isobaric adiabatic process. This is done as follows. This is our equation 24. Integrating the above equation, we get equation 25 as in the equation, delta Cp is assumed to be constant. That's why it is taken outside the integral sign. Thus, if the values of delta H, delta Cp and the initial temperature Ti are known, then the final temperature Tf, which is the maximum flame temperature, can be calculated. Now, we shall look at the Hess's law. Hess's law was established by the Russian scientist German H. Hess in 1840. This law is known as the Hess's law of constant heat summation. This law states that the amount of heat evolved and absorbed in a process including any chemical change is the same whether the process takes place in one or several steps. That is, the total change in enthalpy does not change during the course of the reaction. Thus, Hess's law is also known as the principle of conservation of energy. The change in enthalpy does not depend on the path taken from the initial to the final state. That is, enthalpy is a state function. Reaction enthalpy changes can be determined by calorimetry for many reactions. It is of particular utility in calculations of the heat of reactions which are difficult for practical calorimetric measurements. The overall energy needed for a chemical reaction can be determined by the Hess's law. Hess's law states that the enthalpy change, that is the heat of reaction at constant pressure in a chemical reaction does not depend on the path between the initial and the final states of the system. That is the overall change in enthalpy is same during a chemical change of a reaction regardless of the number of steps through which the reaction takes place. For example, for a change from reactant to product that takes place in four steps or a single step, the total change in enthalpy will be the same. According to Hess's law, delta H is equals to delta H1 plus delta H2 plus delta H3 plus delta H4. This is also depicted by diagram. This generalization means that enthalpy of the reaction depends only on the initial reactants and the final products and not on the intermediate products that can be formed. Thus, enthalpy change which cannot be measured directly is calculated by the Hess's law. If the net enthalpy change of the reaction is negative, then the reaction is said to be exothermic. Positive value of enthalpy change corresponds to endothermic reactions. Hess's law states that changes in enthalpy are additive. Thus, for a single reaction change in enthalpy, delta H is given by equation where delta HF stands for the enthalpy of formation and superscripts not represent standard state values. The equation is the combination of two reactions. These are Now we shall see the extension of Hess's law. The change in entropy and Gibbs free energy can also be calculated by applying the concepts of Hess's law. The Bordwell thermodynamic cycle is an example of such an extension which takes advantage of easily measured equilibria and redox potentials to determine experimentally inaccessible Gibbs free energy values. Thus, the change in free energy can be determined by equation, but entropy can be measured as an absolute value. Thus, entropy of formation is not required. Simply absolute values of the entropy are used. Now we shall look at the applications of Hess's law. Hess's law of constant heat summation is useful in the determination of enthalpies of the calculation of enthalpies of reaction, determination of enthalpy changes of slow reactions, calculation of enthalpies of formation, 
enthalpy of formation of reactive intermediates. It helps in determining the lattice energies of ionic substances by building von Haber cycles if the electron affinity to form the anion is known. Now we have an exercise. The heat of dissociation per mole of a gaseous water at 18 degrees Celsius and 1 atmosphere is 2417502 joules. Calculate its value at 68 degrees Celsius. Data given are the solution is as follows. Now we shall summarize what we have learnt in this module. The branch of chemistry which deals with the energy changes involved in a chemical reaction is called thermochemistry. The relation between enthalpy at constant volume QV and enthalpy at constant pressure QP is given by QP equals to QV plus delta Ng RT. Enthalpies of reactions at 25 degrees Celsius can be determined if delta HF0 values of the reactants and products involved in the reactions are known as Kirchhoff's equation is given by equation maximum flame temperature is defined as the maximum temperature attained by the flame zone containing the resultant gases due to the heat evolved by the combustion of the fuel under adiabatic conditions at constant pressure. If the combustion is carried out under adiabatic conditions at constant volume, the maximum temperature attained is called maximum explosion temperature. Hess's law was established by Russian chemist German H. Hess in 1840. Hess's law states that the amount of heat evolved and absorbed in a process including a chemical change is the same whether the process takes place in one step or several steps. That is, the total change in enthalpy does not change during the course of the reaction. Hess's law states that the changes in enthalpy are additive. Thus, for a single reaction change in the enthalpy, delta H is given by equation 